Good morning, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this morning's morning prayer. Today is Friday the 15th of January. Uh, so we are halfway through the month or so. And um, we pray, we, we come this morning to thank God for a new day. And to entrust this day to him, to commit, to commit our lives to him afresh for this new day. And so we are grateful to God for this day and we ask for his help. So let's pray. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your light springs up for the righteous, and all the peoples have seen your glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God, King of the nations. To you be praise and glory forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. As the sun of righteousness dawns in our hearts, anoint our lips with the seal of your spirit that we may witness to your gospel and sing your praise in all the earth. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. O oh, be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious. His steadfast love is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. On the collect. Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, make known your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And our, our psalm for this morning, our psalm is Psalm 67. Psalm 67. Psalm 67. Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us so that your ways may be known on earth your salvation among all nations. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the peoples with equity and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. The land yields its harvest, God, our God, blesses us. May God bless us still, so that all the ends of the earth will fear him. Amen. It's a psalm of blessing, isn't it? A psalm seeking God's blessing. May God be gracious to us and bless us. The blessing of God is his, is his graciousness, his, his compassion, his mercy. His riches being lavished upon us. That's his blessing. So may the Lord bless us and make his face 
to shine upon us. The face of the Lord is the kindness of God, the, 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 the graciousness of God. May he smile on us, is what it's saying. May his face shine upon us. May God smile on us. And uh, um, uh, I, actually, let, uh, let me read uh, the meditation from Keller because I think it's quite good. Like Abraham, we are blessed. Only that we might be a blessing to all the peoples of the earth. And there it is. God doesn't just bless us for us to go around saying, I am blessed, I am blessed. Praise the Lord, I'm blessed. No, 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 no. God blesses us so that we in turn may be a blessing to the rest of the world, to those around us. Abraham was blessed to be a blessing. Every person that God has blessed, he blesses us so that we become blessing to others. He gives us the light so that we can share that light to others. You see, that's what the church is here for. The church is God's blessing to the world. Uh, the church, it, it is because of the church, it's because of God's people in the world, why God blesses the world, you see. And... Um, Sisters and brothers, we are called to do our part. However small that bit is, maybe just to one person. Maybe you can only bless one person. But God has blessed you. You become a blessing to others. God doesn't bless you so you can go around boasting how blessed you are. No. Anyway, let me continue reading Keller's um, meditation. If you truly enjoy something, you instinctively want to help others to praise it too. Praising it to others completes the enjoyment. So true, true enjoyment of God must lead naturally to mission, to helping others see the beauty that you see. God never draws us in except to send us out, to serve and reach others. We want a multi-ethnic international church of worshipers and a world of justice. We must not take credit for our own blessings, but point beyond ourselves to God. Amen. The, the idea uh, Tim is pointing out here is that when you enjoy, when you enjoy something, true enjoyment means you want to share that enjoyment. You want to show it. You want to express it to others. You have received something. You, it's an enjoyment. You want to want others to enjoy it too. Lord, the praise of the praiseworthy is above all rewards. If you, in all your lofty beauty, have delighted in us and blessed us by grace, it should remove all fear and all lethargy, so that we can speak to others of your glory and goodness. Make me a witness for you today. Amen. Amen. All right, moving on to the, our New Testament reading, which is 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. This then is how you ought to regard us as servants of Christ, as those entrusted with the mysteries God has revealed. Now it is required that those who have been entrusted, well, well let's, let's read what's there and not what I think should be there. <laughs> now it is required that those who have give, been given a trust must prove faithful. I care very little if I am judged by you or by any human court. Indeed, I do not even judge myself. My conscience is clear, but that does not make me innocent. It is the Lord who judges me. Therefore, judge nothing before the appointed time. Wait until the Lord comes. He will bring to light what is hidden in darkness 
and he will expose the motives of the heart. At that time, each will receive their praise from God. Now, brothers and sisters, I have applied these things to myself and Apollos for your benefit, so that you may learn from us the meaning of the saying, do not go beyond what is written. Then you will not be puffed up in being a follower of one of us over against the other. For who makes you different from anyone else? What do you have that you did not receive? And if you did receive it, why do you boast as though you did not? Already you have all you want. Already you have become rich. You have begun to reign and that without us. Oh, I wish that you really had begun to reign so that we also might reign with you. For it seems to me that God has put us apostles on display at the end of the procession, like those condemned to die in the arena. Mm. We have been made a spectacle to the whole universe, to angels as well as to human beings. We are fools for Christ, but you are so wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are honored, we are dishonored. To this very hour, we go hungry and thirsty. We are in rags, we are brutally treated, we are homeless. We work hard with our own hands. When we are cursed, we bless. When we are persecuted, we endure it. When we are slandered, we answer kindly. We have become the scum of the earth, the garbage of the world, right up to this moment. I am writing this not to shame you, but to warn you as my dear children. Even if you had 10,000 guardians in Christ, you do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I became your father through the gospel. Therefore, I urge you to imitate me. For this reason, I have sent to you Timothy, my son, whom I love, who is faithful in the Lord. He will remind you of my way of life in Christ Jesus, which agrees with what I teach everywhere in every church. Some of you have become arrogant as if I were not coming to you, but I will come to you very soon if the Lord is willing. And then I will find out not only how men, how these arrogant people are talking, but what power they have. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. What do you prefer? Shall I come to you with a rod of discipline or shall I come in love? and with a gentle spirit. All right, Paul here scolding, as it were, scolding the Corinthian Christians, the Corinthians believers. Yeah, sisters and brothers, when we read these, these scripture, we need to realize what's going on in the background. Um, Paul is scolding them because they are divided. Remember, they are, there is division in the church and people are taking sides about who is better and which leader is more is more dynamic or whatever and 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 Paul is 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 chastising them for this matter and calling them babies rather than mature Christians because of their 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 foolishness uh, regarding personality politics that's really what it is personality politics in the church and Paul is condemning that. And sisters and brothers, it's a, it's a fascinating thing. You would think that this scripture is not in, this writing is not in the scriptures because nothing has changed in the last 2,000 years since Paul wrote these words. Personality politics has not gone away. You would think that we would have heeded Paul's words. Paul said at the very end, should I come with a rod of discipline? Or shall I come with love and gentle spirit? It all is a matter of where you are when I come. Will you heed my letters and change your ways? Or will you carry on so that when I come, I will be more of a strict father than of a loving and gentle father? Same father, 
but I can come in strictness and with the rod, as it were, uh, and, 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 uh, or I come with gentleness and, and, and love. Uh, which do you prefer? It will all depend on your attitude and what you uh, uh, and whether you change your ways before I get there. Okay, so so this is a great. It starts by saying, but well, Paul says this is how we ought to regard us. You ought to regard us. We are servants of Christ, and as those entrusted with the mysteries God has revealed. So Paul says we are nothing but servants of Christ. That is it. God has entrusted to us the mystery of the gospel. That's all that we are, you know, and, 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 um, and, and therefore we don't need to be put up there on a pedestal, Paul or Apollos or Peter. We are, we are mere servants of Christ. And, um, and, and it is required that those who have been trusted, uh, given a trust, must prove faithful. God has entrusted the gospel to us. And we have to prove faithful to that message. That's what we are called to do, sisters and brothers. And therefore, you, as God's people, are to, where Paul says over, over here, imitate me. Um, here it is, verse 16. Therefore, I urge you to imitate me. Why? Because um, God has called me and I am being faithful to that calling, he says. However, my favorite verse in this chapter is verse 3 and 4, verses 3 and 4, where Paul says, I care very little if I am judged by you or been by any human court. Indeed, I do not even judge myself. My conscience is clear, but that does not make me innocent. It is the Lord who judges me. And this I find fascinating because Paul is basically saying, I am. I do not care about your opinion of me. <laughs> I don't even care about my opinion of me. All I care about is what Jesus thinks of me. I don't care about what you think of me. And I don't care about what I think of me. You know, and, and this, is, uh, this is where uh, the whole issue of uh, self, self-esteem and and and, 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 and and whether or not there are people who are so, who, who are, uh, what's the word, who, who depend so much on other people's value judgment of them. You know, um, they, 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 they live for other people's approval. And Paul says, I am not interested in your approval or disapproval of me. I, I, I don't even approve or disapprove of myself. I, I I have reached that place, says Paul, in my spiritual life where I am not concerned with what you think about me. And I am not too concerned about what I think about me either. All that matters to me right now is what Jesus thinks of me. It is the Lord who judges me, not you, not even me. May I say, sisters and brothers, that it, 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 it takes great spiritual maturity to be at that place. Most of us, the majority of us, 90%, maybe 99% of us, care deeply about other people's opinion, what people think, you know, how, how I dress, is my hair right, is my, am I wearing the right clothes, am I, and people, people judge us every day based on all sorts of things. People are judging me right now, whether or not I'm doing this right. Am I looking properly in the camera? Am I dressed properly? All sorts of things. And Paul is saying, we need to be spiritually mature to the place where I can say, you can say, I do not care about your opinion of me. I don't even care about my opinion of me. All I care about is what Jesus thinks of me. That is spiritual maturity. May God help us all to get there one day. That our, our approval is not based on what other people think. Not even what I think about me. Not what we think about ourselves. Our low self-esteem or high self-esteem, whichever. That's not what matters. Spiritual maturity means that 
those things don't matter is what Jesus Christ thinks about me that matters. Not what that person on the road thinks. Not even what I think. May God help us to be at that place. Let's pray. Oh Lord, help us, we pray, to, to have this sense of self-forgetfulness that we will forget ourselves and focus on Jesus. Lord, we are so self-conscious. Oh, your people are so full of self. And Lord, we pray that we will heed Paul's mature, um, mature advice to Christians. It's about himself. But help us to be at that same spiritual level of maturity where we can say, I, I am not concerned about other people's opinion of me. I am not even concerned about my own opinion of me. The only opinion that matters is Christ. And so, Lord, help us to be at that place so that he alone matters and not our own self-conscious opinion of ourselves or others. Lord, make, make it so in our lives, we pray. Make us this mature. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Luther, Lord, we entrust another day to you. We, we don't know what this day will bring, but you do. And so, dear God, we, we bring this day to you. We ask, Lord, that you will help us in whatever, whatever it is that we are doing today. Most of us are not going out. The majority of us are locked in, as it were, during these times of pandemic. And we pray, Lord, that you will protect us even in our homes. Protect us, Lord, from evil thoughts, from idleness, from laziness even. Give us the desire to, even during these times of lockdown, to, to read and meditate on your word, to focus our, our attention on you. And that we just, we're not just sitting home watching TV or, or doing nothing. Or, or, or we... We are reminded sometimes in the old in the old proverbs, the devil find work for idle hands. And sometimes, Lord, we get idle because we are locked down and we're not going anywhere and we don't have anything to do. And so the devil finds a space in that vacuum to fill. And so, Lord, may we not allow that. May we, by the Holy Spirit, fill the vacuum with you, with thoughts of God, with meditating on your word through prayer, through reading of good books that will bring edification and, 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 and spiritual upliftment to our souls. So Lord, during these times of isolation and lockdown, help us to find worthwhile things to do that will build our spiritual lives, make us more mature, make us the kind of mature Christians that Paul is, is writing, is wanting the Corinthian Christians to be. Not the babies, but mature believers who can take meat and not just milk. And so Lord, help us during these times to, to, to focus our hearts, our minds, our, our days on you. And so, dear God, may we not waste this day on frivolity. May we not waste this day by just laying about or lazying about, sleeping and doing nothing and watching TV or whatever. But may we use it wisely to develop our own spiritual muscles so that we can be more mature in the faith. Help us, Lord, we pray. Lord, in your mercy hear our prayer. And Lord, we bring to you, we continue to bring to you those who are on our prayer list in our church. We, we ask, Lord, that you'll hear our prayer for them. Uh, we remember them this morning. I, I do want to pray again for, for Deborah's neighbor and friend, Sandra, and the difficulties that she's been having. We, we entrust Sandra to you, Lord, and we pray for Deborah as she seeks to help her 
and um, and that she will get the help that she needs uh, from the medical services and and from those around her, including Deborah. Thank you, for Lord, for the for giving her neighbor like Deborah. And Lord, we pray that you'll give Deborah the strength that she needs to be a good neighbor to Sandra during these difficult times for her. And so, Lord, we <clears throat> we entrust our lives to you. And especially as the, the this vaccine is being rolled out, we remember, Lord, all those who are taking it and who are getting it at this time. We pray for them and we pray, Lord, that there'll be no side effects and there'll be no adverse responses to, to this vaccine. But Lord, instead, it will do the job for which we desire it to do. That is to, to immune us, give us immunity uh, from this COVID disease and help us, Lord, to, to be able to turn the corner during, through this pandemic so that more people will not, more people will not die through this disease anymore. And so, Lord, we, we pray that the vaccines will, will be effective in, 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 stopping, in stopping the spread of COVID disease and coronavirus in our community, in our country, and in our world. We pray for, we remember, Lord, we ask that you remember in your mercy to bless, Lord, to bless the doctors, the nurses, the carers, and those in, those who are looking after the sick and the infirmed today. Remember them, Lord, in your mercy. Remember Walter and Jean, we, we, Lord, we pray for them. And we pray for Bruce as he tries to, um, to put them together and to get the help he needs to look after them both. We pray for them today and pray for Bruce that you'll give him the grace, help him, Lord, direct him and give him the strength that he needs. He's been tirelessly doing this and we, we thank you for his love and his, his compassion for his parents. And we pray, Lord, that you'll continue to, to, to show him, give him the, 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 the strength he needs to carry on, to do this task that you have called him to. We pray for Walter that he will get well soon and, uh, and that he will, by God's grace, by your grace, O oh God, be joined with Jean uh, in the same home soon as well. Lord, we bring this to you. And uh, others, Lord, we pray for Monica as well in the home. We pray, we, we pray Lord, that you be there for her in the difficult times. So, Lord, all these and, and so many others we bring to you this morning. And we ask for your mercy. We ask for your blessing upon these, your children. In Jesus' name, amen. Christ be with me, Christ within me, Christ behind me, Christ before me, Christ beside me, Christ to win me, Christ to comfort and restore me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.
for may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you his peace and give you his all-sufficient grace today, sisters and brothers. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed day, one and all.